Welcome back to beginningdeveloper.com. Today we're going to be looking at the uh, IntelliJ IDE and converting an already existing Java project into the Maven architecture. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm using the Java project that I've been using in the previous um, Maven videos and uh, it's just an open source Java project I found online and I had some classes so it's uh, it'll work for this purpose. Uh, if this is similar to your project where you use just a standard Java project, you should be able to follow these steps to the T and get you up and running. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to generate the packet structure in the POM. So to do that, we just simply right click the project and go to Add Framework Support. This may look slightly different depending on what you have installed, but the one that we're interested in is the Maven one. So we're going to go ahead and check that and we're going to hit OK. This will generate the package structure we need and bring us to the POM. We will need to fill out some things. So we're going to fill out the group ID and we're going to use the one that we've been using before this whole series, which is com beginning developer.maven. We're going to keep the artifact ID as library and the version as 1.0 snapshot. We're going to hit save and we're going to import our changes. Now, if you'll notice here, we have our source main and our source test. If we expand the main, we now have our Java file with all of our Java classes, but we also have our resources, which is empty. Now, if we are to build this application, well, let's just go ahead and do that and you'll see. So we build up here and we make the project. This will generate all of our dependencies and build everything. Uh, it's giving me some warnings. This is an older project that I downloaded, so it's just saying that 1.5 is obsolete, which is fine. But it generated our target folder. So if we expand that out, we see that we have classes and generated sources. And inside here are all of our classes. But notice one thing we don't see is our jar. Now, if this is happening to you, I'm going to show you how to fix that. Uh, IntelliJ didn't automatically uh, make these two things, so we're going to have to do them by hand. And the first thing that we need to do is create a manifest. So underneath the source, main, resources, we're going to create a new directory. And all in caps, we're going to create the manifest uh, folder, which is meta-inf, and we're going to hit OK. Underneath this, we need to create a manifest file. I found the easiest, quickest way to do this is to go to New and File, and we'll create the .mf extension. So again, all in caps, manifest.mf. And since we use the .mf extension, it's going to generate our manifest file for us. The two things that we need in here is a version, so manifest version, which is just 1.0, and we need to point to our main class that has the main method in it. So for me, it's admin login. You notice it has an error. If you click it, it's saying that it has to end on a new line. So we're simply going to hit the enter, end on a new line, gets rid of that error, and save. Now that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing is we need to generate an artifact. And to be able to do that, we need to tell the application whenever to build where to put it. So again, on our project, we hit File, Project Structure, and the one that we're interested in is Artifacts. Notice how there's nothing here. That's actually our issue. So we're going to add one with the plus. This is going to be a JAR application. And since it's Maven, if the menu will pop up for me long enough, uh, we want to create one from modules with dependencies. We need to point again to our main class, which is admin login, extract jars, and it says directory for meta manifest file. Well, we know for a fact that our manifest that we want to put uh, our jar, we have our target right there. And we're going to hit OK. And we're going to hit OK one more time. Now this generates it. Uh, there's two things that we need to do. For one, this is output directory. It's not pointing to the target, so we need to switch that. So we're going to select target, hit OK. And to make our, make our life a little bit easier, we're going to go ahead and select this checkbox. So that way, every time we build, it generates a new jar for us. We'll hit select. Everything else looks good. Apply and OK. Now, let's go ahead and build this project one more time and see what happens up here to build and we make the project. Again down here it's building everything but notice now on target we have our library.jar. 
So uh, we should be able to double click that and execute it. But the one thing that I do want to do is slightly different. We're going to go to run. Notice how the first three options on here, run, debug, and run with coverage, are grayed out. We need to create one for the specific project. So we're going to get to run with the dot dot dot. Edit configurations. There's nothing here, so we want to go ahead and create a new one. This is a jar application, so we're going to select jar. Now we have our unnamed application. Let's just go ahead and name it library. Path to jar, which we know at this point now is in target. We're going to select it and we're going to hit OK. And everything else is good. But the reason why I wanted to do this is because if I had specific VM options or program arguments, this is where I could put them. So you may have something where you may have logging and you want to only use verbose logging, or you may have uh, need for more memory, so you may need to increase your perb gem space. There are lots of reasons why you may need VM arguments uh, or program arguments, and this is where you would do that. Uh, I'm going to leave mine blank for now. I'm going to hit apply, and I'm going to hit run. Now. This found where the jar was and it executed it and my application started up. If I hit exit, it closes the application and notice how next time I hit run, here it is. So I have my run, my debug, and my run library with coverage. So these three options now are using the previous one that I just built and saved. And that's it guys. Uh, it was pretty straightforward. There were a few things that it didn't auto-generate for us, the manifest and then also the artifact configuration, but for the most part it was a pretty easy process. Uh, IntelliJ is a pretty powerful IDE and combining it with the Maven architecture is, is definitely a pro. So if you guys have any other questions or comments, please leave them below.